Hi everyone, and welcome to my next video tutorial, which is going to be focused on integrating and utilizing GraphQL within our Django applications. Now, simply put, GraphQL is a query language for APIs and it is used for fetching data with queries. Now, the first thing that we're going to do before we get started with this is we need to make sure that we have a simple Django project up and running, which of course is a Django app and also, and most importantly, a Django model. So we need a Django model to, how can I say, be formatted into a GraphQL type so that we can further use GraphQL. So of course, um, in this video, I'm going to separate it into chapters so you can skip ahead to where you feel it's necessary to start learning. Now, for those that wanna go from scratch and follow along with me, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that we are going to want to ensure is that we have a Django project that we want to work with. As you can see, I have a very simple Django project here. And of course, even my um, homepage here, of course, is still showing the default Django message. So make sure you have a very simple Django project. Once you've gone ahead and created your Django project, what we want to do is create a Django app, and then we want to create a model as well. So what we can do now is create a Django app. So I'm going to open up my terminal where I'm issuing commands, and I'm going to say Django-admin, and then I'm going to say start, app and the app is going to be called customer. So you want to create your Django app. Okay, there we can see it's been created if it goes to a new line. And here is my Django app known as customer. Okay, next what we need to do is we need to register this app in our main project settings.py file. So I'm going to go to my project folder here called CRM. That's my Django project called CRM. Then to my settings.py file and here under installed app, what you want to do is right at the end, you can just go ahead and add in the name of your Django app. Mine's called customer. So I'm going to say customer, comma. So make sure you've gone ahead and registered it, very important. After you've done that, of course, make sure you save. And then you can navigate now to your Django app called customer. Then we're going to navigate to the models.py file within our customer app. So let's click on that. And now what we want to do is we want to create our Django model. Now I already have one pre-built here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add that in. So I have a model called client and I have three attributes here, namely first name, last name, and city. And they all part of the data type of a char field here with the max character lengths of a hundred characters. Okay. So make sure you've got a model that you want to work with. So I'm just going to show you the directory structure here. So in my customer app, I have my models.py file and here is my model, which I want to utilize with GraphQL. Okay, so make sure you've got your model and then what you wanna do is you want to create this model. So you can run the following command, which is going to be python manage.py make migrations. And that's going to create that model for you. And as we can see, it's created the client model. And now we want to push that client model to our database so we can actually utilize it. So then we need to say python manage.py migrate. And that's gonna push that model. And there we go, it's been pushed, great. So that model has now been pushed and we can now go ahead and utilize it. Next, we want to register this model in our admin.py file. So in your customer app here, you just want to open up your admin.py file. And now all we need to do is we need to say, from dot and then it's going to look for the models.py file within our current directory here we want to say from dot models and then you want to say import and then the model name here that we want to import is called client so that we can register this in our django admin so we can just say import client next you want to register your model so now with the admin module you want to say admin dot site dot register and in parentheses is going to be the model that you model name that you put in to be registered so that we can utilize it and access it in Django admin. And there it is, client. Okay, perfect. Now to make sure that you can actually access this model and see it's actually registered, what you wanna do is create a super user. So we're gonna say python manage.py create super user. So let's do that. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on honor. Skip the email, add in a password. And again, okay, and let's uh, run our server and let's just access the Django admin just to make sure it's been registered. Okay, there we go. 
And then what you can do is just go to your admin and go ahead and enter in your CPU the credentials to make sure that that model has been registered. Right, so as soon as your credentials have been entered in, let's go ahead and log in to our admin dashboard. Here we are. So now we can see we have our customer app and under it we have our client model. We click on that, we can see we are now able to add clients and objects according to the first name, last name and city. So as we can see now, and most importantly, we have zero objects as of now. But we have this registered and we're good to go. All right, so you can log out now and let's just head on over to our local uh, host our default page. All right, so we've got that all set up and ready to go. So we can close this up and be good for now. All right, so let's actually move on to the main part and actually set up GraphQL and utilize it within our Django application. So let's go ahead and continue with the process at hand. All right, so let's go ahead now and install Graphene and Graphene Django within our Django project. So what you wanna do is you want to install Graphene Django. So you want to open up your terminal and stop the server. And we can simply go ahead and copy the following and install that library within our application. Now I've already installed it beforehand, so it's gonna be very quick here to reinstall it for me. And do keep in mind here that this package also comes along with a lot of other sub packages along with it. So just keep that in mind as to why it will take a long time to install it the first time. All right, so we've got that installed and set up. Now, Graphene Django is essentially, um, that installation is going to allow us to integrate GraphQL within our Django models. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to add in the Graphene underscore Django app to our list of installed apps. So if you scroll down here, you can see here that we need to go ahead and configure the app here. So we can go ahead and copy graphene underscore Django and navigate to our project. Then we can go to our settings.py file. And here under installed apps, you can go ahead and scroll down and just add in a graphene underscore Django. Okay, so make sure you go ahead and add this in. Now by adding graphene Django here to a list of installed apps here, it's going to make GraphQL functionality available throughout our entire Django project. Now the Next thing that you would need to do is you're going to have to add in the schema here of graphene to your settings.py file. Now we aren't going to go into this um, just yet, but we need to go ahead and add this in in the meantime. So you can copy that and add that in. I'd recommend you just comment this out for the time being. And you can add this just for clarity anywhere in your settings.py file. And essentially this graphene setting that we have here, okay, is looking for the schema and the location of the schema here. So you can see it says myapp.schema.schema, right? Now, essentially, okay, this graphene setting is gonna tell Django where our GraphQL schema is and the schema, okay, setting is pointing to the schema.py file in the app that we decide to choose as a directory, which is gonna contain the GraphQL schema. But I'll explain this in a moment, so not to worry. But make sure that you have that in place. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create our GraphQL schema, right? And it's best to create a schema.py file where we will define this GraphQL schema, okay? So what we can do for now is close settings.py file. We want to head on over to our customer app. We're going to right-click on it, say new file, and we're going to call this schema.py make sure that you've created that. Then we can of course uh, maximize this file and we can start off with the process. Now, what we're going to want to do is import the necessary libraries. Now to help us to not have to rebuild the wheel. In the documentation here, you can see here that we have a list of steps, okay? So the first thing is we want to import a graphene, okay? So we can copy that and paste it in. And this is the main GraphQL library that we'll be utilizing. After which we want to import the second line and I'll explain what that is for in a moment. Okay, so essentially the from graphene underscore Django is the app that we have referenced in our project is going to import the Django object type. Now the Django object type is going to help us to convert our Django model into a GraphQL type. So essentially it's like a formatter. It's going to format our Django model into a particular format which GraphQL can recognize and utilize as a GraphQL type. Okay, 
The next thing that we need to do is we need to import the model to which we want to utilize this upon. So if we go to our app here and we go to our models.py file. So in the same directory as we can see here, we want to import the client model that we want to utilize. So we want all of this data, as we can see here, to be in a format that we can transform to GraphQL. So here in schema.py, we can just say from dot models import, and we want to import that client to model. So from dot uh, models, okay, we're looking for this models.py file, since so it's in the same directory, then we want to import that client model that we have here so that we can utilize it, okay? So this is the model that we are essentially exposing through GraphQL. Right, let's continue. Now what we want to do is we want to create a GraphQL type for our model, okay? So let's uh, head on back in here and we're going to create a class for that and you can give the class name anything that you desire. I'd recommend keeping it close to the model name that you have here. So I'm going to say client type and within the parentheses there, I'm going to ensure that I inherit the Django object type as follows here so we can format this client model. So we want to add that in. Now customer, uh, now excuse me, client type, okay, this is going to be a class that's going to convert our client model into a GraphQL type by utilizing Django object type. Next that we need to do is we need to go on ahead and define our metadata. So we're going to create a class called meta, which is going to need to know the model and the fields that we want to expose. So it's going to define the model of client. So we're going to say model equals client. And then the fields that we want to expose to GraphQL. So we're going to say fields, and then we want to say equals and First of all, we're going to have ID. Now, in Django, when you create your model, you don't explicitly st state the ID field. That's something that's automatically done behind the scenes. But rest assured, for each model that you create, you also have an ID field that's just called ID. So in our schema.py here, under our fields, when we're defining our metadata, we can put in ID. Now, for the rest of the attributes slash fields, we can use what we define, such as first name, last name, and city. So first underscore name is next. So we can say first underscore name, then we had last underscore name, and then we had city. So make sure that you specify the fields that you want to um, utilize and put into place. All right, great, perfect. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna go to a, another line on the same line where we defined our type here. So I'll just uh, scroll down, to, uh, can keep it like that for now. So now we want to define the query class to fetch our data. So this is also going to be a class So we can say class and it's going to be query. And within parentheses, we want to ensure that we pass through graphene dot and it's going to be object type. Make sure you've passed that through. Now query is the root entry point for all GraphQL queries within our app. And graphene.object type, okay, this, uh, it means that this class will be used as a GraphQL object type for querying our data. Okay, so make sure you've got that into place. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and define a GraphQL query field, okay? And we are going to choose something that we feel is quite generic here. So let's say we want to select all clients. So we can just add an extra space here and we can say all underscore clients equals, I'm gonna say uh, graphene, and then we wanna say dot list. And within the parentheses, we're going to say client type. So we're referencing our client type right here. So make sure that you have that set up here. So like I mentioned, this is going to define a, this line of code is going to define a GraphQL query field called all clients, okay, which returns a list of all, cust of all client type objects. So that is essentially what we have here in play. Okay, now the graphene.list here, Okay, method specifies the return type of the query. So in our case, it's going to be a list of client type objects that it will be returning. Okay, so make sure that you have that 
in place. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go on ahead and create the schema. Okay. So what we can do is we can go ahead and specify it here in line of where our class is. So we can say schema and we're going to say equals and we're going to say graphene dot schema. And then what we want to do is we want to set the query according to this query class that we have here. So we want to query that data as follows. Now this is going to create the GraphQL schema with the query class as the main entry point for querying the data. Okay, so we have that set. Now before we continue, what I want us to do now is we can now refer to that settings.py file that we had here open. So in our settings.py file, we can see here that we specified the graphene schema here. So now we can take a look at what we have set. So we can uncomment that. And the schema here, we need to look at the app of what it is, where it is, excuse me. So that is in our customer app here. So that's going to be the first level. Then if we open customer, we can see we are going to then refer to schema.py. So schema. That's the second iteration. And in schema.py, we have schema here already set here, which we have set. So to actually create the GraphQL schema. So here in our settings.py file here, it's also going to be schema. So you just literally need to change the app name and then follow the structure for creating that uh, Python file and the reference that we have here set. So that's very important that you have this setting here into place. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is open up our urls.py file. So the main urls.py file in our project, we can open that right here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go on ahead and ensure that we have imported the GraphQL view. So what you can do actually is we can go ahead and do just that. So let's see if we have this here in our documentation here. Yep, we do. So from graphene underscore Django dot views, we want to import the GraphQL view. So you can go ahead and copy the following right. Like so and paste that in, All right? Make sure you've got that set. Then we can set up the pass that we need. So we can say uh, pass and we should have that pass declaration. Okay, so it's already here. So we can copy this here. So this is the pass to actually access the interface of GraphQL. So you wanna make sure that you have all of that in place and add it in like such. All right, so we can see here that yeah, we have that as is. So make sure that you have got that in place. Okay, so that's very important that you have that there. Now. What we've imported here, so this is from the graphene underscore Django app dot views um, dot by file. So that is according to this app that we have here. We're importing GraphQL view. Now this view handles incoming GraphQL queries. And as you can see here, we have the default route name set up in this app. And we're using that view and setting it as a view according to graph. I, um, graph IQL set to true. And this enables the graph IQL interface um, which is uh, commonly known as the Graphy, um, the Graphy QL interface. And this is a user-friendly tool that we can utilize for running our GraphQL queries in our browser. So it's gonna be an interface, which I'm gonna show you how you can access. So what you can do now is of course, you can head on over to your application and you just want to run your server. So let's say Python manage.py run server. Now just make sure yeah, that you have a comma at the end here. So just something I wanted to mention. So make sure you have a comment at the end here of all of your URLs or your paths. And let's run our server. Just going to take a moment, there we go. And now we can see according to the route name, so we can access the interface. You can just go ahead and copy the following that we have right here in our route name. And you can just paste that in like such. And there we go. So as we can see now, we now have our graph uh, or graphy QL interface here that we can actually go ahead and utilize. Okay, so this is what you need to make sure that you're accessing now. So now we can actually go ahead and perform all the queries that we want to go on ahead and actually check out. Now, this is of course, as you can see, um, able to start in the Django development server. So at our local host at port 8000, this is going to allow us to access our graph um, QL API in our browser. So we have of course added in graph um, QL in our URL. So now we can go ahead and set everything up as it should be. 
Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to perform a short test here just to see how this works. Now, we haven't added in any specific queries as we can see in our schema, okay? So we have the list type here, which we've set for our clients, but we haven't actually gone in ahead and actually set up any queries yet. But I just want to show you the base functionality for how you can query to fetch all of your clients as an example. So you're going to start off by adding in a curly brace of so a set of a curly brace here. Then you want to specify the query that you want to uh, base this of, and that's going to be all underscore clients. Now what you can do is you can start typing all, and you can see here it auto fills what you have set up in your query. So we have set up all underscore clients, and that's going to automatically pick that up as all clients. Then of course you can open this up as all clients, and then you can go ahead and type in ID, Perfect, you can uh, press enter. Then we can say first name, and it already looks for first name. And then we can have last name, and then we have city. And we can see all of this data has been transcribed from our Django model. So here are all the fields that we've set. We have the model set here, and this query here is going to list out everything that it has obtained from the client type class here of all the fields in the Django model, it's going to list it out. And you can see here it automatically, if we just remove this and start typing it in, it's going to automatically recognize that. And of course, all clients is going to fall under what we have associated with that list. So the list here of all of these fields is grouped under all underscore clients, which we can see here. Now, if we were to run this and execute this query, it's gonna say data all clients um, null. And that's because we don't actually have any data that we can utilize. Now, that's where the next part is gonna come in. We're actually going to add in some objects, and then we're going to actually put in the query um, that we need to run here within our uh, class here that we have specified. We need to actually put in the actual query that we wanna do if we want to go ahead and retrieve um, which part of data we want to eventually um, resolve. So first we actually need to add in some data that we want to work with. So what you can do essentially is you can go ahead to your Django admin. So I'm going to just um, duplicate this tab and I'm just going to set this as admin. Okay, and you want to log into your Django admin yet again. Right, so as soon as you've entered in your credentials, you can now log in to the Django admin. And we can go to our client. Let's go and add our client now. So all you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and enter in some data. So I'm just going to say, let's say John Doe, and let's say that John Doe is from, uh, let's put this as London. That's John Doe. Add in another client, let's say Kate Smith. And let's say she's also from London. So putting in a capital here, uh, keep note. And then let's say we have Lion, that's Jacobs. And he is from, let's say, Pretoria. And save. Okay, so we have three objects here, which we have created now. So we can actually now work with our objects now. And to ensure that we are able to actually see some data here, we need we need to go ahead and add in actual queries within our query class here. So for the meantime, you can just go ahead and let's actually, we don't need this Django admin anymore. You can see we have our objects. Um, this might be necessary to just evaluate, which might be easier for you to learn. So we can keep this open, go back to our interface. And what I want to do now is I can just stop my server for now. And we need to go ahead and add in the options so that we can actually resolve our queries. So what you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to go on ahead and essentially create a resolver function. So just below all clients here, let's go here. You want to create a function and it's gonna call def and we're gonna call it resolve underscore. And it must be similar to what we stated here as on all underscore clients. So we're gonna say resolve underscore all underscore clients. And then we want to pass through root and info as our parameters. And essentially what this resolver function does is, is it tells GraphQL how to fetch the data for our 
um, query, which is going to be to return all of our um, client objects. And that is going to be stipulated as follows and is going to be as return client dot objects dot all. So to give you some perspective now, so this resolver function is going to tell GraphQL how to fetch the data for our all clients query. And then what we're going to do is we are going to return the following statement, which is client.objects at all. And it's going to return all the clients. So by saying return client.objects at all, we're going to return all the clients from our database using Django's ORM via object relational mapping. Okay, so we need to have this in place. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and rerun our server. Okay, and now if we execute our query, we can see here that we get an error here, so it's not a valid JSON. So what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to refresh your page, okay? And you're going to want to just bridge the gaps that we have here. So you can just make sure this, this is a lot nicer and a lot more tight. Okay, so make sure you have that, that you've set the following as I have here so that we can return our uh, objects here. So let's go ahead and run the following. And here we go, we can now see we've got all of that data here in place. So we can see we're returning all of the objects here with GraphQL. So we can see we've got the ID, first name, last name, city. Um, we can see that's all for all these users. And just for confirmation, you can go to an object here. Let's choose one at random. Two, so Kate Smith London, let's check here. We have a Kate a Smith and London in place here. Okay, so it's retrieving all of the clients here. We can see it with all the key value pairs. So make sure here when you do this, that you also just tighten up all the empty spaces here, that you restart your server as well, and that you also refresh the interface here just to make sure you don't run into any errors of the sorts. So let's go ahead and perform a more specific query. Let's actually go on ahead and make it a bit more specific. Let's go ahead and return um, according to a specific user, according to a filter. So let's go ahead and do just that. So what we can do is we can, of course, remove this statement and we can go ahead and select an object based on a specific parameter here. So let's go ahead and do just that. So let's go ahead and adjust everything so that we can do that test. Right, so what we're going to do now is create a filter. Now, if we have a look at the objects that we have, we have an object here where the city is different. It says Pretoria here. And as we can see in our data, we have London, London. Let's say we only want to see Pretoria as a city, for example. So what you can do is you can head on over to your schema.py and we can remove this and change the dot all method to dot filter. And we're going to filter according to city and that city must just be Pretoria. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set city and that's going to be what I want to filter from. So that's going to be the field. And here, since it will be a string, we need to put in our quotes and it needs to, of course, keep in mind, please keep in mind here that it's um, sensitive, so case sensitive. So here, Pretoria, as we can see, is a capital P. Right, and you want to set that up, then make sure you follow these steps. So you want to, first of all, restart your server. As soon as you made that change, then what you want to do in GraphQL here, you just want to refresh that as well. And then you want to execute the query. And here, as you can see, it's filtering and only returning that particular record where we can see that the city is equal to Pretoria. Let's say we want to only get the, the objects that pertain to London. So we can uh, ref remove that value there and set this to London as such. And of course, um, it may automatically reload for you. If it doesn't, you can just stop your server and just rerun pysomanage.py run server. Okay, there we go. And I'd recommend just refreshing the page here and run that query. And here it's only picking up the objects where the city here, as we can see, is set to London. All right. So that's it for this video tutorial, guys. That's how you can essentially go on ahead and ensure that you have integrated 
GraphQL within your Django applications and also how you can utilize it as well. So I've just given you a taste how you can utilize um, this query language so that you can fetch your data with various queries. So we've learned how we can retrieve all of the data, so all of our objects. And we've also learned how we can filter objects according to a specific object or specific set of object according to a set um, constraint that we have set into place. All right, guys, so that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, thank you for the support, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.